in this self no bobbly de baba deep do do Greetings listeners all around the world you're listening to the Unique Equilibrium Podcast by Hypno Athletics Exercising Your Mind. I'm your host and guide, Hakeem Ali Bokus Alexander, and I'll be talking about all things metaphysical, hypnosis, and meditation for relaxation, sleep, lucid dreaming, and beyond. Get ready. Here we go. Okay, this podcast is going to be called The New Alien Hunters. Telekinesis for targeting gray aliens and UAPs, UFOs. And I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but I'm going to turn on this light that I have here, one of those ring lights, you know, everybody's using them nowadays. I for some reason like the icy cold light. This is too warm for me, it looks like I'm, I don't know, it reminds me of being in the sun. This is kind of half and half a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the, the, the straight it's like a com- computer blue, like a Tron blue. So, again, this is called uh, The New Alien Hunters, Telekinesis for Targeting Gray Aliens, UFOs, and UAP- UAPs. All right, so for those of you who haven't been following the Unique Equilibrium podcast, which this is for. As you can see right now, I'm using this screen recorder, and I just have myself in a little box here. But I have the page open for my Unique Equilibrium podcast uh, on Spreaker, which, you know, I'm going to move this over, because I want to show that iHeart logo. There you go. Which is partnered with iHeart Radio, and I've been podcasting with them since 2015 and unfortunately I lost a bunch of my podcasts because I didn't know how to hold on to them but that's fine anyway here's the point of, of this so the new alien hunters right telekinesis for targeting right is that targeting yes targeting gray aliens and and UFOs UAPs UFOs a lot of people know the term stands for unidentified flying objects UAPs UAP is short for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. I think that I should actually introduce a new term because they're not just aerial phenomena. It could just be up, right? UP, Unidentified Phenomena. There's a lot of that going around. But we'll see. Um... I mean, like, if I wanted to get creative, I could call it pump, right? To be silly and, and, and descriptive, right? Paranormal, unidentified, moving phenomena, right? Whatever. I mean, so, who, who knows? But let's focus on the telekinesis and targeting. And specifically, I said gray aliens. So, I'm, so telekinesis for targeting gray aliens and UFOs or UAPs. So now, let's break that apart into the different pieces, starting from the, just the, in the order of different terms in the title. Telekinesis, also known as psychokinesis, very much related to telepathy. These all have to do with the communicate, communicating with other minds or distant objects or the influencing or moving of distant objects without any apparent physical touching. 
So, you know, if I put my hand up and I, uh, you know, I, I use my mind maybe to transfer energy to my hand, I could push my mobile device, my camera that you're looking at me away without touching it or pull it towards me without any apparent means. This, this is very similar in some ways to what's known as quantum entanglement, which Albert Einstein, I believe Albert Einstein was the one who described it as spooky action at a distance. And anyway, in quantum entanglement, you know, when you have a, a subatomic particle, for example, like, a, like an electron in a system, maybe there's two electrons, they, they are what's called coupled. And one is spinning up while the other one is simultaneously spinning down. And they will always be spinning, one spinning up and one spinning down all the time in the system. And it doesn't matter if you separate them by a few microns or by several thousand kilometers. If the system is moving where you have one, this one this represents moving up and another one moving down, they're doing that at the same time, the quantum spin numbers, one's moving up and one is moving down. And if you cause the one that's spinning up, right, to suddenly spin down, what happens is that the one that's, the one that's spinning down will start to spin up. So as soon as this one that's spinning up starts to spin down, right, the one that's spinning down will automatically start to spin up. So let's look at that again here. Up, down. Spinning up, spinning down. Spinning up, spinning down. Spin down. Did you see that? This one just started spinning up simultaneously. Right, so in quantum entanglement, entanglement it's very much similar to a lot of these different phenomena and paranormal, parapsychology, metaphysics, supernatural, <clears throat> where different systems, different physical bodies, different things are, are, are having an influence or an affect from a distance with no apparent physical communication. And when I say no apparent physical communication, I mean that the way that these systems are communicating is, for all intents and purposes, invisible to us as humans, observers, and to scientists. But this has been known to happen in, in specifically something quantum entanglement and very related to quantum teleportation, but let's just forget about that now. So that's, but that's telekinesis. Psychokinesis is also known, very related to telepathy. And so anyway, that's the first part of, of telekinesis for targeting gray aliens, um, UFOs, unidentified flying objects, and UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. So that's the part one. It's telekinesis, where influencing something at a distance using our minds is the most, uh, the most typical way that we discuss this in, in, in supernatural and paranormal and metaphysical terms. So now the second part is for targeting what? Targeting. Targeting, I'm using the word targeting specifically just as it's used in archery and the, the, the use of other weapons systems. There's, there's, there's a phenomenon of alien abduction and a lot of people reporting very negative experiences with non-human entities or non-human biological entities, also known as extraterrestrials, but for this use, I'm going to say aliens, which is very specifically using the word aliens for non-human entities that are demonic in nature. They're, I mean, they're not good to humans. They, they, they perform experiments that are unwanted, that are invasive, that are uncomfortable, that are frightening, terrifying, horrifying to people who are experiencing them. They're unwanted. Abductions go along with that and all that type of phenomena. So the word alien here is used for beings that are evil, essentially. And 
I do not differentiate between angels and extraterrestrials, aliens and demons. All of these different phenomena of beings that can exist in a non-physical world yet appear or phase in and out of their non-physical world into our physical world and back again, which would be known as spiritual entities but there's a technology behind that. Those are all in the same category. Aliens, angels, demons, extraterrestrials. They're all in the same categories. The gods, all of that, for non-religious people. Religious people would consider them to be angels and demons and gods and devils. In my use of all these terms, they're, they're all the same thing. According to ancient astronaut or ancient alien theorists, Many of the ancient peoples who were witnessing or experiencing extraterrestrials or, and or aliens considered them to be gods, angels, and demons and devils. So, but to me, they're, they're all the same. There's no distinction. The only difference is, is what people decide to call them. Fairies, gnomes, right? Bigfoot, skinwalkers, Loch Ness Monster, and, and many of those things could actually be creatures that are still extant, that still exist on Earth, like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot could, could very well be creatures that are also very intelligent and know how to hide, but we don't know yet scientifically. But it's a little bit different from what we're talking about. So, where did I get to? Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, targeting. So, the very specific targeting. Imagine a hunter. And that's why I said the new alien hunters. Because, so I want to make this distinction that most alien hunters are people who are just looking for UFOs and looking for sightings. And they're looking to see them and to, to witness and to experience and have encounters of some kind. Right? They want to be able to see the UFOs, so they're looking in the skies, and they're using equipment, and, and they're looking for aliens and all that stuff like that. I'm using the word hunter in the more direct definition of the term as someone who, who waits to sight and kill something. So an elk hunter waits to see and to kill an elk, right? Most likely, you know, for food consumption purposes and things like that, like, like Joe Rogan. But what I'm talking about is hunting, is being an alien hunter for the specific purpose of targeting and killing gray aliens, but not only gray aliens, also what, what are known as reptoids or reptilians and also the ancients or the insectoids because these are the extraterrestrial entities that I know of from personal experience that cause harm in the very least at least psychologically to human beings in the form of nightmares and terrible horrifying scary psychological experiences whether they be while wide awake or during dream and nightmare experiences so, again, the targeting is really in the targeting, as in a targeting system, getting something in your sights to fire a weapon at them to, to injure and or most likely or most desirably to kill them or to destroy them. Because I also, fortunately and unfortunately in this case, I also understand uh, everlasting life. So really when you're targeting and killing an extraterrestrial, an evil extraterrestrial al entity or an alien, it's only preventing them from causing you personally harm. When you learn how to kill these entities, they will go on forever in another form of some kind. And maybe they'll learn a lesson from you killing them that says, hey, I'm not going to tolerate, you know, your your harmful, horrifying bullcrap, but they will go on in another form. You, you may destroy that form that they've occupied, that they use as an avatar at the time, but they will go on forever. And this is also promising for us as human beings 
and from what I understand about a lot of things about learning how to control your dreams and, and become a lucid dreamer and a super lucid dreamer, and I will probably talk about that a little bit later on, but the point is, is that uh, the, the better you become at being an alien hunter, the better you become at not only uh, killing the fear that you have of these entities, whether they be aliens or demons, or a combination of both or whatever is causing you harm psychologically in the form of nightmares or other things that are happening to you. What, what's, what's happening is that you're simply creating a field against those things for yourself and also teaching them a lesson and teaching them that, that we humans have this ability to defend ourselves and it puts them on notice that there's an evolution happening. So again, telekinesis for targeting gray aliens, right? Gray aliens and UFOs, UAPs, UAPs. But I'm using the term gray alien as a blanket for the three alien or demon entities that I know personally of to cause harm to humans, which are the gray aliens the reptilians or reptoids and the ancient insects or insectoids. <clears throat> and the telekinesis part comes in because we're using our minds to affect them, to cause them, to target them, to cause them harm, to destroy them, at least in the current form that they are, from a distance or without physically touching them because that's how they influence and affect us. There's evidence that, and from what I know too, people are abducted or terrorized by these beings and people feel like, like I have felt like I was on board a ship or in a, an alien lab, but witnesses, girlfriends who've been laying in the bed next to me have said that only thing that they witnessed was me having a nightmare or me interacting or somehow having a bad experience but I, I physically was there and so one conclusion to come from this one one hypothesis is that the abductions that are happening are not of the physical body always they are of the astral body, the consciousness that are being hijacked or possessed to use religious demonic terminology, right? That they're, these demons, these aliens are possessing our consciousness, our astral body, our soul, and using them as avatars to carry out whatever nefarious or evil purposes that they are. Or that they're leaving some kind of physical clone or projection of who we are in our bed that's still somehow connected to who we are and that's reacting. That's why a person who wakes up or is sleeping or lying down or awake next to us sees us having a nightmare, but our bodies are still there. But we miss time. The person looks over and says, wakes us up, are you okay? You know, what's going on? And so... Um, Yeah. So the possession and the abduction may not be always a physical one. Maybe sometimes it is, and maybe there are reasons why sometimes people are actually physically removed completely, or why there are sometimes people are only astrally or in spirit, in consciousness, removed. And this is important because although we are very connected and we are one spiritually, mentally, consciously and physically and materially there's also a way to separate just like as what happens in astral projection or out of body experiences and many people practice like myself having out of body experiences and one of the launch pads for that is becoming a lucid dreamer and a super lucid dreamer to not only become aware of as a lucid dreamer that you're dreaming but to then be able to control your dreams as a super lucid dreamer. 
And many times it's very easy to step off from that into out-of-body experiences. And that's at will. And usually when I do that, and I don't recall any negative experiences of doing that by myself on purpose where there was negative, but the, the experiences that when it happens when I don't want it to or I'm not inviting that to happen, that's when the experiences are negative and that's when other entities are doing that and that's when it's a violation of my of my sentient sovereignty of, of my freedom as a my free will as a being if you come in and you start taking over possessing my soul my consciousness without my permission that to me is like is an alien abduction or a possess, or demonic possession So, <clears throat> okay, so we've gotten to telekinesis, the influencing and affecting of other consciousness and other physical systems at a distance, just like in quantum uh, entanglement. Uh, telekinesis for targeting. Targeting, we're specifically talking about targeting as in a weapons system. Gray aliens representing any of the non-human entities or other evil intelligences that interact with human beings and also their their vehicles like UFOs, unidentified flying objects and unidentified alien phenomena um, and my contention my purpose in this whole presentation is that we can in fact target them and send a message to them that we know that they're here, we disagree with what they're doing to us, and we can do something about it. So now, now this transitions into the next part about, yeah, what can we do about it and how do I know this? Well, I have a lot of personal experience, but I've personally done at least one experiment, however haphazard it was, that produced results that were very convincing, that telekinesis exist and I'm also going to talk about something called hypnokinesis uh, which is very similar to the fictional dream demon Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise so let me wrap this up though let me see how much time have we gone so far 20, 20 minutes 22 minutes almost so the reason why telekinesis should be developed is because many of these beings, the aliens and extraterrestrial, are communicating, influencing, and affecting us through what appear to be non-physical means. There doesn't seem to be any physical contact, including the fact that they telepathically communicate information to us. When they speak to us, it's not from the sound of, you know, physical sound waves being produced by a mouth or other organ that produces sound, like an instrument, a musical instrument that vibrates some medium like wood or the air and then travels to our hearing organs, our ears, which then affects our tympanic membrane and then gets represented into our eighth cranial nerve pair and then gets transferred into electronic, electronic signals into our brain. No, we just instantly get information that supersedes that just like quantum entanglement happens instantaneously without following the laws of Einstein's supposed cosmic speed limit of light being the fastest speed in our universe. And so this is why the, the, the telepathy and the telekinesis, the development is very important because we can use this to target these evil entities, these demonic entities, these alien entities. And because what, what, what has been shown through telekinetic experiments and what I've done as a telekinetic project is I've demonstrated on video, once again, a very crude experiment that our minds can influence electronic systems, a software-based system, a random number generator. And the, experiments I, that I, the experiment that I conducted was I did 15 tests and each test was simply a digital coin toss where I pressed a key, pressed a button or an icon that said generate on a random number generator. And it was set to either just give me a zero or a one. 
but beforehand I would decide if I was going to concentrate on a zero or a one by flipping a real coin, so this coin that I have right here, uh, this, this heads meant one and the tails meant zero. And so I'd flip that coin and if it said heads, I would focus on a one and then I'd press the key that said generate and it would give me a one or a zero. And by me focusing on it, I attempted to steer, right, to push the result of that, that, that digital coin flip to be what I was thinking about. And what shows me that this conclusively happened is for several reasons. First reason in the more general broad sense is that 10 out of the 15 trials that I did resulted in what I call a telekinetic pass, meaning that the numeral 1 or 0 that I focused on as a result of the, the, the coin toss resulted in me getting and in, 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 in the device, my, my Galaxy S7 device that I downloaded the app of the random number generator on, if I decided that I wanted to focus more on a 1, I got a 1 10 times out of 15, or a 0 10 times out of 15, but in more specifically, whatever I decided to focus on, either a 1 or a 0, I got that result 10 times out of 15. Whatever I decided I wanted to focus on, I got that result 10 times out of 15. Oh, and that just gave me an idea of, of a, an experiment to focus on. The next telekinetic project I'm going to do is to focus on s exclusively just ones and then another one to exclusively focus on just zeros. Anyway, that's a good, that's another good one to focus on. And not only that, but the, the second thing that showed me that this was true is that when I started trial eight, I had two different things to help me focus. I had a, and for those who are watching this on video, you can see that I drew on a piece of paper a numeral one or a numeral zero, and I would look at that numeral zero or numeral one drawn on those index cards while listening to my own voice saying zero, 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 zero repeatedly or one, 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 one repeatedly. And when I started doing that, seven trials in a row were telekinetic passes. So when I started looking at and listening to my voice saying zero or one from trial eight, so eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, which are seven in a row, all resulted in telekinetic passes. And to roughly loosely use Newton's first law of motion, that's, which is the law of inertia that says for an object in motion, stays in motion or an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. This is really significant because the outside force was me, was me doubling up on what, what I was focusing on both visually and auditorily by looking at and listening to a certain numeral. And as soon as I did that, the results were coherent, like seven in a row. So yes, I admit again, when I first started the experiment, it was really just me figuring out how to put it together, but I finally got everything together. But to see that change happen when I made those specific, when I added those specific focus tools, to me is, is pretty incre incredible. It is, it is highly unlikely that there's any other reason that that happened. Why would a random number generator give me seven in a row of what I wanted? It could have gone either way. It's very, very interesting. I made videos of that. I'll put a link in this podcast, the video and the audio podcast, for you to look at those individual videos. You should scrutinize them. You should look at them very closely. The results are also written out so you can look at it because you will see that what I'm saying is exactly how I'm reporting it now, and it's quite amazing. So there's the case for telekinesis. There's the case for telekinesis being used as a tool and then the other part of that is, is, is that, as I mentioned before, a lot of these different interactions with extraterrestrials and aliens and, and humans are inter interactions that come from what appear to be an invisible, non-physical reality interfacing and interacting with our physical world. And so what I've demonstrated and what I understand and what I know is that we can do it vice versa. We can we can, as physical beings, do two things. 
or, or a very interesting thing we can do. We are a physical being and we can use our invisible, non-physical mind to influence a physical system. In this case, the random number generator. But I also created something called uh, the Metatron Weapon Against Alien Threats, which makes use of this. Specifically against the gray aliens, the reptoids or reptilians, and the insectoids and insects and uh, ancients. And they appear to us with vehicles, right? UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, and UFOs, unidentified flying objects, which they were originally called or if you want to get real old school, flying saucers. But I created a process, I developed a weapon where you can use your mind to focus on these different kinds of beings, specifically the gray aliens, the reptilians, and the insectoids, and imagine what kind of destruction that you want to see happen to them. You can imagine it as very simple as, a, as an arrow being fired into their gray alien skulls and killing them or watching their their vehicles explode and crash into the ground so that our military scientists can find them and torture the crap out of them and do experiments on them right or whatever and reverse engineer the technology there's so many different ways and yes that's violent and that's cruel but they're here on earth abducting people and causing all kinds of nightmares and all kinds of other crazy stuff that are unwanted by humans but that's the, the gist of it. There really doesn't need to be any more said. By using our minds and our thoughts, very specifically focusing on a target, it's like a bullseye target that you would fire an arrow into, and then imagining the kind of harm and destruction that happens to them, you are essentially sending a message to these entities that we know how to fight against you, and we're doing it, which sends a very clear message, because I've sent very clear messages too, I've had experiences, I've, I've had encounters recently, and I have caused abductions to halt, and experiences that would otherwise be considered to be nightmares, where I just ended up chuckling and laughing, like, ha ha ha, I got over on you. And now one more thing I need to say about this, <clears throat> is what if, what if these were all pathology? What if all of us people that are having alien abduction experiences and encounters with demons and aliens and things like that are all just due to some type of chemical imbalance in the brain that could be considered in the same category as schizophrenia and all, all that other stuff? The biggest takeaway from that is what's very interesting is that regardless like let's just say that's true let's just say that these alien abductions and demon visitations and the sleep apnea experiences and the sleep paralysis experiences are all just due to chemical imbalances or things that our minds are making up what I found though is that regardless of whether that's the case or not is that when you practice fighting against them, when you practice self-defense against alien abductions in the way that I've said by believing that your thoughts can affect these creatures and that you can fight against them using your thoughts and using your imagination to form weapons and to do things against them, the result is that I no longer have nightmares, I no longer suffer from fear from them. And I no longer dread going to sleep as I used to because these things happened all the time. When you imagine yourself having these superpowers to fight against them, you put yourself on the same level. You're doing the same thing that they're using and you become empowered. And that's a first step because you're no longer living with the stress and the fear of these things happening. Now you're, you're on par with, and it's like an adventure now. Now you're superhero now you can fight them so that's the other part of this right what I found personally and what I know that other people experience when you find a tool to stand up to and empower yourself you no longer feel the fear and the powerlessness it doesn't call you stress anymore it becomes an adventure 
Now you are an Avenger. Now you're in the movie. Now you're part of it. But now you're a hero. And that is very healing. So that's the part. Look, I'm willing to, 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 to accept that perhaps these experiences are pathology. That there's something going on that's not normal happening to other people. But that doesn't matter. This is actually a way to deal with it. Empowering yourself by believing that you can. And that's very important. And so now I'm going to get into um, hypnokinesis. The, excuse me, I had a, just something hanging off of my fingernail there. Um, the ability to... Well, let me just talk about having power over dreams. And then after this, we'll, we'll be done for sure. In future podcasts, I'm going to condense all of this material and make it more succinct. But as, as usual, with a lot of times when I, when I bring new ideas together, I do take a longer time to talk about them because my own mind is figuring out how really to put these things together in a coherent way that's going to make sense using as many of the tools that I have available to me at the time. So the next thing is hypnokinesis, which is really just to sum it up, the power, the power to, to control dreams. It's basically hypnokinesis is, is lucid dreaming, but on a it's super lucid dreaming. It's on a level where not only are you able to know that you're dreaming and control the different things of your dreams, but also to influence and cause certain dreams in other people. Now, why, why is this important? It's important because in my dreams, and in many other people's dreams, when you become a super lucid dreamer, you can do a lot of things that you are not able to do in the physical world. You can fly, you, can, you have telekinesis or psychokinesis where you can cause things to move away or come towards you, where you can have manifestation powers by creating objects. I've created helicopters and motorcycles and all manner of weapons, everything from firearms to swords to bombs. I have even used my voice to, to create earthquakes. You have super strength. All of the things that, that, that superheroes have in the movies, almost all of that I've, I've had all of those things in the dream world while knowing that I'm dreaming. And these are very important for people who have nightmares. When you're able to control your dreams, you can't have nightmares anymore. When you're the god of your dreams, how can you have a nightmare? You're the one controlling all of it. And this is so very important because whether or not we're experiencing these things only in our minds, right? Or whether this is some kind of phenomena that is interdimensional. By learning these skills, we're learning to be dream warriors. We're learning to be interdimensional warriors, or at the very least, to have confidence and stop feeling fear. And this is that's significant. It's important to be empowered, regardless of what the cause of these things are. Especially if you can do it without the use of medications and psychiatric intervention, which most of it I disagree with, even though I am a student of psychopharmacology and I'm fascinated by pharmacology in general and the way that these drugs affect the body and the mind. But the way that they're used is horrific. And self-serving at best. But when you can really heal yourself and have better experiences in life, being free from fear and being empowered, that's very important to a lot of people and I think that it's important to share that information with people who need it. And of course, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not telling people to stop dealing with their doctors, but this is something you can add on, this understanding, to feel more empowered. Just look at the book, Reality Testing. You know, it's a very, very good book. Uh, the, the name of the author right now escapes me, but, um, mm. William Glasser, MD, Reality Testing, great book. Also, The Natural Mind by Dr. Andrew Weil, MD, as well. Those two books, I would, I would 
recommend reading? I would recommend reading The Natural Mind by Andrew Weil, MD, first, and then Reality Testing by William Glasser, MD, next. So anyway, that's it. Um, I think if I summarized all of this right now, I would say that meditation with the purpose of becoming a master of lucid dreams or a super lucid dreamer are very important. And while you're a lucid dreamer or a super lucid dreamer, focusing on the powers and abilities of telekinesis or psychokinesis and things like being able to fly and to manifest things like that. But having superpowers in your lucid dream is the step. So meditate. There are many ways to meditate. And I've covered that in other podcasts and I'll cover them again soon. And meditating for the purpose of becoming a super lucid dreamer and focusing on specific skills like telekinesis and flying to just, just for a, a couple of them to focus on. All right now. I'm Hakeem Alexander, for those of you who don't know, or as I would most likely, or as I most desire to be identified as Hakeem Ali Bokas Alexander. This is the Uniquilibrium podcast. Thanks for listening and or watching, and I'll catch you on the next wave. Stay well.